Hi, I'm Zach, and this is a dev update for my VR guitar project. I want to thank everyone who has offered their comments and feedback about this project. My last video led to some great ideas and feature requests on Reddit, Twitter, YouTube. Someone even found a bug just by watching the video. So thank you, everyone. I really appreciate the feedback, and I try to add your quotes into the issues I create at GitHub. I also want to announce that, for the very first time, the VR Guitar app is available to download. There's a link in the video description. If you do try it, please let me know what you think and what I could do to make it better. One other note, the original goal of this project was to build a guitar, but along the way I decided that I'd rather invent a new virtual instrument rather than struggling to mimic a real one. So the project has morphed into this 30 string, strummable, impossible virtual instrument, and it really needs a new name to match. It's sort of like a guitar, an auto harp, a piano. Anyway, names are hard, and if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Okay, finally, let's talk about the latest changes. The chord selectors have evolved in a big way. They started out arranged as a grid, then I thought about moving them into a single row or a piano-like layout, but after all that, I landed on this radial layout. The chord selections now lock in place when you move away, and this layout allows you to move the cursor directly to another chord without moving through other chords along the way. The radial layout has gone through its own design evolution. Here's my original mock-up, and here's a clip showing an intermediate design where I kept the 3D look of the fills and boundaries. I decided to simplify it, flattening the design onto a single plane. The 3D shapes are now invisible, but are still there to provide the 3D selection zone for each button. The buttons use colors that match their notes, and they have visual indicators that grow based on the cursor's proximity. I also redesigned the target indicator on the strumming side. It now has two main elements. The thin ring always stays the same size and lights up when the cursor moves into the strumming zone. The other ring grows based on the cursor's distance from the strings. Those sizes are calculated so that this ring passes through the thin ring when the cursor is at the edge of the strumming zone. The entire indicator changes color based on the nearest string, uh, which helps you see which one you're about to hit. There were a lot of other changes in this version. I removed the indicator panels that wrapped around the sides of the instrument. They didn't make sense anymore with the new chord selectors, and the target indicator seems good enough at indicating depth. With those panels gone, I was able to rotate the string and chord elements independently, making them face more towards your eye rather than facing straight ahead. I improved the lighting by adjusting the relative intensity of all the lights, and also by giving them all a consistent radius. The previous string lights had a very large radius, which made all the lighting colors blend together. Now the hand gets clearly illuminated with different colors as it moves past the strings. Last, I reversed the order of the string segments. After some discussion online, we all decided that it really makes the most sense to put the lower notes on the left side. So what's next? There are lots of ideas that I could explore, like using the left hand to perform expressions, providing more options for the string positions, using multiple fingers for strumming, or adding new instrument sounds. I don't have a lot of time before the 3D Jam deadline, so I want to hear what you think is the most important. That's all for this update. For those of you with an Oculus and Elite Motion, don't forget to try out the app. You can find this entire video series on my YouTube channel, and find me on Twitter for project updates. Dev up and rock on.